yeah, whatever. It is what it is. <laughs> Not let that talk slide here. <laughs> Hi there, welcome to the Reading Queens podcast. We're excited you're here to join us to talk about books. Yay. And random tangents and anything else that comes up because I used to plan these out and now we just talk and I love it. So <laughs> we're here. We're going to talk about books by Asian authors. That is our topic today and I'm very excited about it. And I am Valia. Hello. I am Tess. And I'm Kay. Yep. And the three of us are going to have some fun. So let's get into it. How are you guys doing? How's life? Lovely. It's pretty good. <laughs> My kids don't have school today, so they were excited about that. <laughs> Ooh. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Are they just running amok all day? Just like no. having a great time? <laughs> Climbing up the walls? <laughs> no. <laughs> better not be running amok right now. <laughs> um, well, I just have to tell you guys, because on a previous episode, I'm pretty sure I like went off on a really long tangent about how much I love the Demon Slayer anime. Um, so I love it so much, but it's not a finished anime series. And so I purchased the full paperback collection of the manga and <laughs> I picked up where I left off from the anime series and I finished it last night. And oh my gosh, I have like all the feels. When I posted an Instagram about me getting the paperbacks of it, I had multiple people inbox me with the same exact thing like literally the same words and they said make sure you have tissues on hand oh my we're like reading the rest and I'm like my husband's already been super ominous about how like a bunch of people die and let me tell you he overestimated the number of people who survive uh, less than he <laughs> told survived. me survive yeah uh, he was like oh yeah about half of so and so of this group is gonna Don't. is gonna survive and I'm like okay good so I can count on at least half and I had like a mathematic equation and I like I had it all my head like analyzing who was probably gonna live and who was gonna die and then I was like I was like you were wrong like that's oh like there was less less of them survived anyways sorry if that's a spoiler for some of you people but I didn't say specifically like the numbers or which group you're good talking you're good. about <laughs> so uh I'll just keep it vague as well but like it I will say it was very satisfying conclusion uh, yes, people died, but there are so many things that were super awesome and like super heartwarming and wholesome. And oh my gosh, I had so many feels. I had dreams about it. I woke up in the middle of the night and I just started like thinking about it while I was like half asleep. And I already started like reading um, the last book volume again today just to like revisit those feels it's just really similar to like how you feel when you're reading like a novel and like if it had a really good ending you're just like I just want to read the ending again because it was like it just gave me so many feels and yeah this manga series is doing that same thing to me and I cannot wait for my daughter to finish it she so she started from the very beginning all over again instead of picking up where the anime left off, because I will say the anime and the manga are very, very, very similar. This, like, even the art style captures, um, of the anime captures the scenes from, like, the manga. So it was, I was really impressed how close it was, so I felt fine just uh, picking up where the anime left off. But my daughter decided to read it all over from the beginning, and she caught up to me so fast. Uh -huh. Like, that kid reads so fast. But anyways, I'm like so excited for her to read it so I can like talk to her about it because like I can talk to my husband about it but like I don't know there's something really fun about talking to my daughter about it because she's gonna be like super emotional over certain things I just know it anyways I had to talk about that because it's on my mind and I'm just like oh, I'm gonna have like it's like a book hangover feeling but it's like a manga but it's also a book to me I mean that's a it's it was a book <laughs> to me <laughs> it's everything I love it. <laughs> Your excitement for it is, it makes me want to finally watch it. Not read it. Uh, yeah, I, did I, I don't mention... have time. <laughs> no, just yeah. watch it. I mean, you're just going to have to wait for like the rest of the series to wrap yeah. up in anime form. But I don't know if I mentioned last time, but like I am dressing up for Halloween for the first time in like probably a decade. And it's going to be me, my husband, and my daughter as Demon Slayer characters. Oh, I love and it. That's cute. We bought like full on cosplay for it, and it's going to be so cute we, it's like six months in advance and I'm like I honestly just wanted the costume like I just want it because it's cool <laughs> so yeah I, I also had to talk about that because it's just like a weird thing and it sounds fun it's amazing and I expect so many pictures 
Yeah. Just FYI. <laughs> now he's got to figure out what to do because um, Halloween is also my birthday and I usually don't do anything. Mm-hmm. I don't do anything Halloween-y. I do very little for my birthday. Uh, so, like, this year I'm like, well, we just got to go somewhere to show off our cool costumes. Yeah. <laughs> the show. Or go to Comic-Con or something to make use of them. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> You should. Comic Con is coming here in May, and I'm Ooh. probably going to. I'm gonna probably gonna go a day. Um, I usually try to, but for years and years and years, I haven't been here in May because I was in New York for the uh, BEA, and they don't have that anymore. So I'm like, oh, I can actually go to Phoenix Comic Con now. So nice. we'll see. I I've only been people. once. I okay. went once and I went for one day with my friends and like it was pretty much only to meet um, Sam Hewen from Outlander. Nice. Um, I mean, I was like, so of our, our group, I was like the one who's like major into like nerd culture and they're like a little bit more like, I don't know, they're cooler than me. In tr- like, <laughs> Being in a classic nerd terms. is not uncool, all right? We will not let that talk <laughs> slide here. <laughs> I mean, I agree. But anyways, they're, like, I think they were, like, a lot more excited about, like, meeting, um, about meeting Sam Hewen. And I was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, let's meet Jamie from Outlander. This is great. But I was like, I also would have been equally excited, uh, to just, like, talk to a bunch of other nerd people yeah. and like I did buy a bunch of cool art so that was my only experience but I would really like to go with my daughter um because I think she would have a really fun time so and it, that's in August for us so we, okay. I still have a little bit of time but I'm like I think that's gotta happen this year <laughs> I think you should she would love it she's at a good age to go too so oh yeah like to definitely. experience it all oh that would be so fun anyway that's it that's all well, I have never been to Comic Con because, as per usual, I am the boring one. So, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I, I would actually love to go. I just have never done it. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. Someday. That's how I felt for a long time. Like, the only reason I went was because my friends were like, oh, I don't even remember how it happened. Like, I don't really get, like, super excited about celebrities, really. Um, so I I think it was just, I don't remember if they had an extra ticket or something. I honestly can't remember how this happened. But, like, the only reason I even went was just because, like, they invited me. And I was like, yeah, totally. I'll go and I'll stand the picture. And I was the one who was off to the side looking awkward. The other ones are all, like, in their <laughs> hot girl outfits. And, like, yeah, they're all, like, posing. Uh, but I do like to look at that picture now and then because it is, it is pretty. It's, he's tall. Sam yeah. Ewan is very tall. Okay. Let me just say that. <laughs> That's cute. I love it. I've never done, like, pictures with anybody when I went. Okay, no, no, no. I've done, I've never done, like, spe- specific or not specific special pictures where you, like, buy and, like, go, like, a, do a meet and green stuff. Um, but I have, like, a whole slew of pictures of me and Pierce Brown um, because he was signing at a table there and like I went through the line whatever and he was just like the sweetest right and so he's like how many pictures do you want and he like came out around the table and we took like selfies Aww. and all this stuff Aww. and then my friend was like we left and my friend's like I think I actually want to read this book now so we went and bought Red Rising at the table and came back into line and then he was like oh you're back for more <laughs> let's take more pictures so we took more pictures oh my pictures. gosh that's so sweet <laughs> that's cool so, like a whole thing um yeah but other like than that like I haven't done like a you know those blue background pictures where you like pay whatever but I have a friend who has a whole collection like every year he like saves money so that he can like get a bunch of what he wants and so he's met like basically anybody you can think of at this point and (laughs) it's awesome yeah that's wild yeah it is he has like a buffy poster and he's like collecting all the buffy character signatures on the same one oh my gosh that's such a cool idea yeah i was like this okay yeah so he's like an extreme level of like nerd and all of that and i love it it's like it's yeah (laughs) I could never be that. <laughs> I never doubt about books like that, but not quite that much at Comic Con, I guess. But they do have a lot more authors at the one at my house, like in Phoenix. I feel like oh, they okay. bring a lot more authors in. And I know a few of Arizona authors are doing like tables or appearances at Comic Con. And that's why I usually go to. I actually go to the panels that are author centric. And so they'll have like, you know, seven fantasy writers and whatever. And so I'll go to that um, panel or something. And then they have like writing, actually writing panels that they do, that's like cool. the authors do. And so that's usually the day that I go. And then, you know, half a day for like writing stuff and half a day of like just 
walking around nerding out about like random stuff. <laughs> okay, so on that note, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. My segues are always so stupid. I'm like, we're just. I just finished talking, and I'm like, let's talk about books. <laughs> well, yeah, whatever. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah, transition. exactly. We were talking about that, and now we're talking about this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're just moving on. I don't know. My hosting uh, skills are not getting better. <laughs> I feel like they're getting worse, but whatever. Um, so last week, if you guys listened to our podcast episode, we kind of brought back the whole tropes discussion situation where we would read a book uh, or pick a specific subject, a trope, and then we would all read different books surrounding that subject. And so today we're talking about uh, Asian authors. And so we each picked a different book to read by a different author. And we're going to talk about it kind of like a little book clubby feeling, but with different books. <laughs> I don't know. It's not really a book club if you read different books, but kind of is in the same time. So we're going to go with it. <laughs> and Tess is going to start us off. What did you read? Tell us about, all about it. I read Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan. Um, and first off, I just have to say that I got the Fairy Loot Edition, mm. which was fantastic. Um, already, both the US and the UK editions of that cover are super pretty in their own way. I did specifically really like the UK edition because the like florals and botanicals and then little sparrows on it were just super pretty. Um, and so I would just, just so happened to be um, the Fairy Loot book of the month that month which was I believe uh, February um maybe it was January I don't remember but I was so excited it is like my favorite special edition book it is so beautiful it has end papers and stuff so yeah I'm talking about something that you can't buy anymore I'm sorry it's not <laughs> something you can go out and find um but I mean it is a gorgeous book even just not being a special edition so uh part of my reading enjoyment was reading such a beautiful book <laughs> but like I don't know sometimes you get those where they're super pretty and it kind of ups your expectations yeah and they're like is this book gonna meet that expectation and this book did it totally <laughs> did it really really met those expectations I loved it so much and it's one of those books where like I can't it's hard for me to even sit and explain why I loved it I just really, really loved it. It just hit on so many things I really loved. The atmosphere was really beautiful. The settings were described well. The clothing was described well. The era, the mythology, there's just so much about it that was just like so cozy. And it reminded me of like, um, it reminded me of like the most magical parts of like Ghibli movies. It also reminded me of some of the like things that I used to love about when I had like this obsession with like, geishas and like Asian artwork when I was younger absolute obsession so like seeing like clothing that was reminiscent of um of just that style and the patterns just like textiles yeah I have a thing about textiles um <laughs> so yeah there was a lot of these things that just really struck the cozy chord for me but then the story itself was also really really good um it is this the premise of the story is the main character is the daughter of the moon goddess, the moon goddess Shang E, and um, it's so it's not exactly retelling. It's not a retelling of the story of Shang E, which is actually like really compelling um, and very interesting. But it does give you a take on um, it does give you a take on the story. So like the the mythology of it is like the the archer. There's an archer who like did this really great thing. He was given immortality, but then his wife ended up taking the immortality and he ended up having to stay mortal. And so there's like the mystery of like, why did she take it? Was there like, uh, was she like, was this like an evil thing that she did? And so this kind of gave a, you know, a specific take on like the reasons behind it. Um, so you get that little bit of a background, but the main character is her daughter. There's a little bit of a love triangle and I didn't mind it. <laughs> <laughs> I normally do mind those things. It was, I will say there were some very stressful moments um when it comes to like the romance but there's also like this friends to lovers thing there are some betrayals <sighs> I just like yeah I, I'm going on and on about it and I just it's again I just don't even know what else to say about like why it was getting here. like oh it was like this very specific plot point and then this happened I'm like it was just a feast for the senses and for my readerly spirit and I loved it and it is uh it's definitely my favorite book of the year um, and I probably even still put it in like my definitely in my like top five for like the past year, like as in like the past 12 months. Um, is it a standalone? Just, 
no. (laughs) (laughs) So I I didn't know if it was going to be a standalone or not, but it's definitely not wrapped up by the end. Um, And there is at least one more book because that one is currently on pre-order. So I'm like, cross my fingers that Fairy Loot is also going to do an edition of that one because I need the matching one. But yeah, things... There's a satisfying conclusion, so it's not like a massive cliffhanger, but there's definitely some more things that haven't been like, um, haven't been like fully figured out yet. I ordered the UK version of that book because I love that cover too, the best. So pretty. But it hasn't arrived yet, so I couldn't read it for this podcast. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I don't know. It takes forever for Book Depository to to send anything nowadays. Yeah, so it I'm can like take a while. three months later it'll just show up on my doorstep and I'm like, what is this? Who sent me a gift? <laughs> <laughs> it was me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love that. But I really want to read it because I've heard really good things about it. And also, like, your excitement for it. Like, yes, it hit all the spots, which is, like, the best. Yeah. The best way to recommend a book, right? Yeah, and then if you hate it, you can be like, that was such a dumb recommendation. Thanks for overhyping it. And I'll be like, I don't believe you. I will fight <laughs> anyone who says this isn't a... Like, you know, sometimes there's books yeah. you're like, I really liked it. And someone else doesn't like it. You're like, okay, I can see that. But anyone else, I'm like, don't even talk about that. If you don't like it, keep it to yourself because I love this and I will defend it to my death. <laughs> it's true. I That's how I felt about some books recently. Like, Dreams Lie Beneath. I was like, I will oh, fight yeah. anybody. <laughs> But thankfully, I haven't needed to fight anybody because I have been correct. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> um, Kay, what did you read for this topic? Uh, I read Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. And I have to say, this was also one of my favorite reads of the year. I read it last year, at uh, the end of the year. So I guess it was my favorite read of last year <laughs> but it's is still, it still in your like top it's you know one of my of top favorite year. ever okay it was wow. so good I loved it it was just like okay one thing about books I get so overwhelmed by um I get so intimidated by long books that are like slower paced I I am all about the fast pacing okay <laughs> like, I, just, <laughs> I just can't keep up with it if it's not fast enough if the pacing isn't fast enough for me, you know, and this one was so fast paced. I love it. You just like jump right into the action and it's like, boom, 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 boom. Things keep happening and happening. And it was so good. I loved it so much. And okay. So it was a retelling of the six swan brothers. I don't remember what the the fairy tale is called. (laughs) Seven swans. I don't remember. Whatever. Um, yeah, so the fairy tale retelling, though, where the brothers turn into swans and then she has to, like, make a net with nettle that stings her fingers. I- anyway, that's the retelling that it was of. And I loved how it wove that story in. Um, I also read somewhere that it was a retelling of another folk tale from somewhere that I don't remember where (laughs) but um in it there's this uh part of the book where her identity is um secret which which is not a spoiler okay like you know who she is from the beginning right so it's not like she's a princess you know that right from the start um but her identity is hidden from those around her and it happens because she has this bowl on her head which I thought was cool I had no problem with it but (laughs) apparently there were some people who thought who didn't understand that or whatever but that part was specifically taken from another folktale you know so I thought that was cool that she wove like two stories into it and even though I don't know anything about this other folktale other than apparently there's a girl who has a bowl on her head I don't know (laughs) um I loved it I just loved the book so much and I honestly think anybody would love it although I guess maybe not (laughs) you never know what people are gonna love whatever but I thought it was so good um her brother she has all these brothers the six brothers and they are distinct and she has like a different relationship with each one of them so amazing characterization um and then there is kind of a love triangle it doesn't feel like a love triangle in this book but 
Uh, let's just say I'm like 99% certain it's going to go there. <laughs> so oh. <laughs> it does a little bit feel like a love triangle, but not really. So I, I usually am not a fan of love triangles, but I really loved this book. And I honestly am okay with it going into a love triangle a little bit. Not not because um, Not because I'm excited about the love triangle, but because I just love the book so much and the story. Uh, Speaking of which, this is not a standalone either. It is a series. Uh, The second book is coming out later this year, I believe. Um, I don't know how many books are supposed to be in the series, though. Which, by the way, I did not know that this was a series until I got to the end of the book. I was like, what? Oh, that <laughs> happens all the time. I'm like, why? Yeah. Just tell me ahead of time so I know. Right. I mean, like, I would not have had any problem at all. I still would have read it. I was still very excited about it. But then I got to the end and I was like, oh, rip my heart out. You know, <laughs> like, it's fine that there are more books, but I need to know. I need to emotionally prepare, <laughs> right? So, yeah, not a standalone, Um, but it was really good, and the love interest, well, both of them, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) I liked both of them. Um, I I can usually tell who she's going to end up with, who the main character will end up with, and I do have a guess, but... um, I'm pretty sure I know who it is, but (laughs) I liked them both. I liked the flavor that they added to the story a lot. The magic system was awesome. It was really cool, very well explained. Um, I also loved, I'm not going to say, I'm going to be really vague because I don't want to give anything away, but there was this other relationship in the story that was really important to the plot, and it was just like this really complicated relationship and um I thought it was cool I really liked (laughs) delving into that relationship and you you know at certain points you're like certain things are one way and then you learn more information and then you're just kind of it kind of keeps you on your toes you're not really sure about things Uh, I'm afraid to give anything away (laughs) (laughs) anyway (laughs) it was very good go read it if you haven't read it yet especially if you're needing a fast-paced um book I did feel like it was um a little bit of a lighter read in that it's not super dark it's not super gritty and um depressing and it does like it does deal with like darker topics as most young adult fantasy books do right but it just dealt with it in a way that didn't it wasn't so heavy do you know what I mean so yeah I I always appreciate books like that where it did um it's not like a light fluffy read by any means it's definitely like it fits in well with young adult fantasy, right? It still has the same <laughs> kind of tone and everything. But I just appreciated that it wasn't, like, it wasn't super heavy. It didn't go as dark as it needed to, as it could have gone, I guess. <laughs> so, right. that makes sense. Yeah, I appreciated that. It was the best. Well, I have it on my TBR. I really want mm-hmm. to read it. I finally, um, I finally bought it because once again, my fairy loot lifestyle. Um, I bought the <laughs> book, the second book, um, in the series, and I didn't have the first one yet. But I was crossing my fingers I would maybe get like a copy of the second or the first one second hand, or I would get it. Um, fairy loot had like a sale of like extras and let me see I did not get it I did not get into the sale on time and then every time I look on eBay it's like so expensive so I ended up just getting the UK edition so that at least the covers will have the same style but yeah I just like I've been really wanting to get that book but I was like oh which which edition do I get and then I was like I'm just gonna do something totally weird and buy the second book in like a different edition that I don't even have yet so now I do have that one to derive from Book Depository, so I can read it soon. Um, but I'm very behind on my reading, so I haven't gotten to it yet. As usual. <laughs> Just because we like buying books doesn't mean we read all of them, right? Exactly. I'm actually starting to get really overwhelmed too, especially since I have like I have two book subscriptions now. And um, I just took like two weeks off reading to do proofreading for my own book. And these books are piling up. I'm starting to get like so many excess books. Like normally it feels like cool to have like some extras. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get those. And I like, oh my gosh, I feel like I have so many extras now. It's like, not to mention all the ones I buy in Kindle all the time. Like, stop it. (laughs) But I'm not going to stop because 
you know. Of course, of course. Because, yeah. You know, <laughs> last year, I actually read all of my physical TBR. That was my goal for the year. I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm finally, because it was so overwhelming, like you said, where I'm just like, I have all these books. I want to read them, but then I keep buying more, and I don't read the other ones, the ones that I already have. So I did it. I finally read all my physical TBR, and now it's like, I got to buy more books because now I'm just not as motivated to read. <laughs> I still read on Kindle, you know, but it's just, it's funny. It's different. Yeah, yeah. the physical books have like a greater weight to them, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> they sit there and mock you. Yeah. yeah they <laughs> just they like not, you. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's not talk about my physical TBR, okay? <laughs> let's just ignore that. No, because like I've had some stuff that I literally will put on my TBR for every month. Like this book, I'm so excited. I want to read it. And it's like six months later and it's still just sitting there. And I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> I'm still excited, but stop judging me, okay? I'll get to you. It's hard when you're a mood reader, too, because I yes. try so hard to be like, this is what I'm going to read next, and this is what I'm going to read after that. And then I go and I try, and it, it's really, I've try, I keep saying I learned this lesson, but then I don't. Like, when I get an urge, even if it's in the middle of another book, I need to go follow that urge, because if I don't, if I'm like, I have to finish this book first, then I'll get to that book. I'll usually end up kind of struggling through the book I'm reading. And then by the time I get to the next book, I struggle through it because I'm not into it anymore. Whereas like, it's always worked a little bit better if I stop a book mid book, do a mid book break, read the other book I'm really excited about, go back to finishing that one. Like that works so much better for me. I've so like, I know when I miss it, when I like miss that excitement. And it's not that the book that it's not like there's anything wrong with a book, but it's just like not for me at that point. And it's mm -hmm. not like keeping my attention because my like, for some reason, I just want something else. And like, I know that if I would have read that when I did, because a lot of times I'll read the first chapter because <laughs> and then I'll know that I want to like keep reading. I'm like, nope, you can't. You got to finish this book first. Um, so yeah, I need to learn that lesson that I'm just a mood reader and I really need to let myself follow the mood because I will read more and I'll read faster because I'm following what excites me. But then it is really hard because then it's like, I, it means I often don't get through the books that I'm like, I was supposed to read this next, but now I'm reading another book. And then I just bought this other book so I can read that right away. But the struggles, man, <laughs> the struggles. Yeah. Okay, so before we go on, I do want to kind of circle back to the book covers. I have to say, it's always cool because um, the U.S. and the U.K. covers are sometimes really similar, sometimes really different. But for Six Crimson Cranes, they're, like, really different. And they're two yeah, totally they different styles, which is really fun. You know, I think it's cool. I think both styles are really cool. And I actually don't really have a favorite. Well, okay, the U.K. covers are pink, so... We all know I love pink. Come on. I mean, if I had to pick a favorite. They've got those, like, pretty pastels. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although I actually do have the U.S. version, not the U.K. version, and I love the U.S. version. It's still. also, it is probably one of the ones where it's so, like, for my taste, it is very closely tied. I That's why I struggled to, like, figure out if I was going to buy mm -hmm. the second book and then go buy the first one. So I'm like, but I also really like the U.S. ones, which are easy for me to get. I don't have to get them on Book Depository uh -huh. or Fairy Loot. So, like, that, and they're both both really good style like the styles are amazing and I feel like the styles would have done well in both countries so it's like really really crazy that like uh, crazy is not the right word but it's, yeah, I don't know crazy. it makes me crazy okay because I had to make a decision yeah which version I wanted to buy well and I feel like usually when covers are that different like if the UK cover is that different from the US cover I almost always have like a very clear preference you know yeah <laughs> like, same okay, this one's so much better than the other one right <laughs> but this time it's like they're both good yeah <laughs> so that is kind of interesting, though, too. Doesn't, um, I'm trying to picture it, the six of uh, cranes, six cranes, six of cranes, six whatever. Crimson six crimson cranes. cranes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so why'd they make the covers pink, too, if that's the title? I mean, I'm not complaining, yeah. but. <laughs> that is interesting. But doesn't that cover, the UK cover, like, feel more like the Tess's books cover, like the daughter of the moon goddess? Like, it has, like, the pastel oh, yeah, the, um, type It has of, the like, what? The pastels colors. Oh, pastels. And, like, yeah, it's the, pastel and, like, really, yeah. like, kind of botanical-y looking. Yeah. Um, same with the girl, what is it? The girl who fell beneath the sea. That's another oh, yeah. one by another Asian author um, by Axie O. Uh, another one that I want to read soon. But that one has, it's very, it has really pretty pastels. 
Um, and the U.S. cover is very different. Mm-hmm. It's it's yeah. There, I feel like the UK back has in the like day, the, the pastels. Yeah, like, they're they have like a trend right going. Yeah, it's like they do a lot of botanicals. They do a lot of like really pretty watercolory pastel mm-hmm. looking things. Um, and I, I really love, like, lately, I've really loved UK covers. Like, mm-hmm. I've preferred a lot of them over the US ones. But then, like, the Six Crimson and Cranes, though, okay. that, that one had me torn. I have to say, I forgot the pink covers are specifically the fairy loot covers, I believe. And, uh, yeah, the, it's like a pinkish purple. Mm-hmm. The UK one is, um, it does still have the pastels, but it's more of like a blue and yellow and orange almost. It doesn't really have the pink. Yeah, it's oh. like a, that's why I'm like I'm really hoping yeah. they match. But yeah, so guess yeah, it's what? A more blue. I and do peachy. have a preference. I do like the U.S. covers better. <laughs> oh, I forgot. Won. Here we go. We got, well, we found a winner. It's just because I like pink, and they're not pink. They're like almost pink, but not quite. So I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's purely my own preference all right like nobody be swayed by that <laughs> <laughs> yeah read the book for the book not the covers come on well it's still Although, like, we it's always cool. do like, anyway you know, also get the yeah. prettiest cover you know yeah, yeah true, true. true. <laughs> <laughs> the, they the uk cover is still beautiful i do still love it but I will say I was pretty disappointed when I couldn't get the specific Fairy Loot edition yeah. on their like extra sale. I was so crushed, but I did get um, what's that one? Uh, 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 I'm blanking out. It is hearts. There's something about hearts. Uh, there's a lot of blood in it. K, you what? read it. <laughs> These by <laughs> red lights. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's oh. a heartwarming, or it's, I guess I wouldn't say heartwarming, but there's just always blood in her book. Stephanie Garber. Um, oh, Once Upon a Broken Heart. <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> I was there's like, there's blood in her books it's coming from red. Yeah, there's always blood. Always blood in her books. And I'm like, this isn't a horror book. Why is there always so much blood? <laughs> but anyway, I don't remember that. Okay, that was that probably like the blood. worst That's way funny. to explain it. It's about hearts and there's blood. Like, okay, it's a, the blood is a small thing, but it's one of those ones that like, I think she even mentioned on social media that there's like always blood. I'm like, girl, I know. (laughs) Like you always write blood in it. But I mean, it's just like the most random things. Anyways, (laughs) that one, I did get the fairy loot edition of that. And I was thrilled because I do really like that for sure. Is that the one that has the soldiers on it? Yeah, and I don't really, I'm not obsessed with the like style, but I am obsessed with that edition because the end papers are really cool. I think there's like, or no, maybe it's the reverse dust jacket um, and there's like stenciled edges and the colors are cool because it is pink. So it's pink. Okay, it's pink. All right, all right. Maybe that's golden. (laughs) I don't know. I don't really like the soldier covers. Sorry, I don't guys. really, yeah, I'm not, like, a big fan. Like, the soldier icons, like, don't really, like, excite me as, like, a reader. Mm-hmm. It made more sense once I read it, but I still, I was like, I don't I, I don't, don't know. know. I, I don't get it because I saw people saying that, like, it makes more sense when you read it. And I'm like, I read it, and I, I don't get it still. Sorry. There's, <laughs> like, one scene where they're, or maybe there's two scenes. Yeah, they, I mean, they just exist there, but they don't have, like, an impact on the plot. Oh, yeah, I do but. remember now. As soon as you say that, I remember. Yeah. What? It's they're very not minor. part of the plot at all. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I do think the U.S. cover is better on that one. Oh, Ooh, that kidding. one won, too. Here we go. Okay, okay but the, I like the Barnes & Noble editions of those because pink. Yeah. that one's pink, pink and, the and, uh-huh. and the lavender, yeah. Uh, yeah, that one is really pretty. Yeah. Okay, why are we but, talking about this? We're I don't know. We're supposed to be talking about Asian <laughs> authors. No more Stephanie Garber or Fairy Loot. <laughs> because this is what we, this is how our podcasts go, okay, guys? I okay, love it. Okay, it's fine. Um, These are important topics, too, for all book They are. <laughs> exactly. I, w- I want to hear you guys uh, comment comment in our on our instagram post for this episode and tell us if you buy specific covers yeah like, who gets who which covers win yeah tell us i, I mean i tell do us. have to say that like the u.s covers tend to appeal to people from the u.s more and the uk covers tend to appeal to people in the uk more like they know their audience which is good mm-hmm. right so it shouldn't be that much of a surprise, I guess, that I tend to like the U.S. covers better. You know? <laughs> I know, but I've, but I've been yet liking the U.K. covers Yeah, better, why do so I like the U.K. What? covers? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's like our artistic side because they're more like paintings and yeah, stuff. Yeah, they are but, really you know, painterly. I don't know. Well, don't some of no them reason. I do. I mean, some of them I do like. 
I, I'm not an illustrator, though. Both Valia and Tess are artists, and I am the opposite of an artist. Like, if I try to draw something, <laughs> it's worse than if I drew nothing, so. You design cool outfits, okay? I know. I was going to say that. <laughs> I know you design cool outfits for your characters, so Thank you are you. creative. Okay. <laughs> and to be fair, I am good at nail art, which don't ask me why I can do art when it's on a nail, but not anywhere else. I don't know. Okay? Hey, that's a specific but... kind of an art, okay? That's impressive. I can't do that. And I am an artist. <laughs> so there you go. Anyway, so that's why I don't like the illustrated covers as much, I think, is I just don't have the eye for it. I'm like, just give me a good symbol, all right? <laughs> anyway. Yeah, it works. Okay, back to books. Sorry. Yes, like, all your of our turn, tangents. Isn't it? Yes. Gosh. Um, so I read Wicked Fox by Kat Cho, right? Yes. Yeah. Um this is I be- it's only a duology, right? It's just the two books or is there gonna be more? Does There's a duology know? as far as I know. I haven't seen any plans for like a second book. Okay. And since I didn't read the second I mean a third book. Since I didn't read the second book, I don't know if it ends fully wrapped up, but I'm guessing it does. Yeah, I think it's only the just the two books. So I only read the first one and um it is a fantasy romance. I think that's how they qual- qualify it whatever anyway it's said <laughs> it's set in the modern day korea and um it is about a girl who has like this incredible secret she is the nine-tailed fox who devours the energy of men in order to survive which the premise of it is so cool and like right up my alley i was really excited about this um so it follows her and her mom as they like move back to this area and she like begins school and right before she begins school she is hunting one of the fairy tale creatures in the forest and ends up saving this boy and in the process of saving him she loses like her fox bead which is where her soul le- lives um and so then she goes to school the next day and the boy is there and so now there's that situation so she's dealing with the fact that she lives with the thing i really liked about this is that she's dealing with the fact that she lives amongst humans but her mom is like you are not human and so she like you cannot feel things you cannot whatever like she really tries to keep her even though she lives within with humans she cannot be like fully human even though she's half human because like her dad i think is human but she doesn't know who he is so um I really like that because it like adds that intensity to like everything she does because you can like see her struggle. And then the main character, the the guy character that she saves, he's very much like we're friends and she's like I don't want to be friends, but we are friends. So there's that whole dynamic which was interesting. Um, One of the things I really liked, um, I know I'm explaining this so well, you guys. One of the things I really liked is um, every couple of chapters, I think, there is like an insert chapter where it um, tells the story, like the the folk tale of like the nine tailed uh, fox and like the magic and stuff like that. The setup of this, you know, um, old magic, basically. So that was kind of cool because then you have like this modern day setup of her living in modern time, but then you have like the actual tale of like how all this came around and like where, where do the fox women come from and where does like the magic come from and stuff like that. So I thought that was like really cool, like a, to bring in to give like that background. The other thing I really liked is the guy's relationship with his grandma. I always, I'm always here for, for sassy grandmas, okay? I just, <laughs> like, love that. Um, and so I really liked his relationship with her. And then, like, obviously, you know, he has, like, family troubles. And so they bond, him and the, the girl bond. I am not pronouncing any of the names because I do not <laughs> want to mispronounce the names. And I know myself, okay, I will mispronounce them and I don't want to disrespect. So <laughs> the girl, the boy, <laughs> one's a fox, the other one's human. Um, they have to figure out how to basically put the fox bee back in her so that like, because one of the things is that if somebody gets a hold of the fox bee, they can control the fox with it. And so, like, she has to protect it. And the thing is, too, her mom is like, "There's that's not a thing. We don't have any fox bees. Like, that's not a thing. Like, from the very beginning. And so it was like, 
she's like, I'm crazy, but I'm not crazy because there's literally a bead in my pocket right now. <laughs> like, you know, so there's like a lot of like mystery involving that whole thing. And there's like danger, obviously, and them living in the human world while not being humans. Like she has to constantly control like her strength, you know, like she throws literally a piece of paper at a at a wall or not a wall, but a glass window and it like shatters. <laughs> So it's like she really has to control herself and like, you know, stuff like that. So it's like her living with humans while being the supernatural being. And then also like she's not allowed to feel things because her mom is always like, don't feel things. And then she starts to feel things for the boy. And yeah, it's just basically her like choosing immortality versus being human. And yes. That's cool. That's it had a very, it had a very strong um, K drama feel. Like the from mm-hmm. beginning to end, it really read like a K drama. Like the there were a lot of tropes, and there were like a lot of plot points that were so reminiscent of a K drama, which I thought was really cool. Um, sorry, I'm like hijacking your no, thing. No, go but for I just it. Have to interject. Um, another thing that I think is cool about this. If you are looking for or like you're craving a story where the female character in a love interest is significantly stronger than the male and the male is a lot more of just like your everyday guy and he's, you know, not strong. He's like attractive, but he's not like the most like I wouldn't say uh, he's not incapable, but he's like not. Like, a lot of the dynamics, a lot of times it's, like, this really handsome, stoic, wealthy guy with, like, this bubbly, sweet girl. And this one, she is this very stoic, trying to, like, be very controlled, but she's super strong, super powerful. And then this guy who's, like, a lot more friendly, he is, uh, he's human, so he's naturally weaker than her. And that's a dynamic we don't normally see um in books and it's really interesting if you're looking for something like that if you're not looking for something like that sometimes it can be a little underwhelming because you're like when's he gonna be like the super strong alpha who's gonna like sweep her off her feet and like like (laughs) it's not gonna do that it's not gonna do that it's not what kind of book it is um so yeah I think that's like a cool thing to note as well is if you want that like she's she's the powerful one in the relationship it's true she can throw him against the wall if she wanted to (laughs) yeah and like she's i feel like she was she was not likable either because of that you know what i mean yeah in the beginning you're kind of like oh my gosh this girl is tough but like also like extra too too much (laughs) like yeah she's very like super control like she just has to be in control Mm -hmm. and she has to try and keep people keep from making friends and she's also trying to figure out like do I trust my mom who's saying that like no we don't make friends with humans blah 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 you just put you keep your nose down go to school and just do your thing and like maybe you should start killing people more like I do because it's not a big deal she has to like try and figure <laughs> out like if her ethics line up with her mom's or if her ethics as she has them um are yeah. You yeah, because that is a cool thing that I, I did like that part is that she only kills during the full moon and she like finds, you know, bad people to kill during the full moon. And that's how she feeds. And like her mom just does not have that. She's just like, whatever, <laughs> like, I'm hungry. <laughs> Let me go murder somebody, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> and so it is really interesting, like having that dynamic. And I know that like, especially in like, um, not especially, but it just in families in general. But I know like in Asian culture, like, that whole respect thing with your elders like that's like a huge part of it right and so like for her to even like think against what her mom is saying like that's that's like a big no no (laughs) big deal (laughs) yeah especially when that's like her only family that she Mm -hmm. she has she's not living with other family members it's just her and her mom and so like that's just a huge thing to think about like trying to rebel against is like Mm -hmm. the one person who's stronger than you who you are already strong um who's like telling you how it is and like if you go against that like are you want you're probably gonna be on your own and what if they're right what if you you know what if it's bad to like trust humans that's it reminds me a lot of I guess not a lot but it has kind of the same vibes as Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa Oh, I never read that. So that one has the main girl, the main character is a fox also, but she's, she's Kitsune. Um, I, I, like, I would call it, she's a fox shifter. I don't, I don't think that's how they call it in the book. Um, I don't remember, but, (laughs) but yeah, it was cool where she, she has lots of power, but she is, it is more of the traditional, she's kind of like a bubbly, sweet girl 
who is very mischievous, very. And then she's paired with this guy who's like, has to be very stoic and have control. <laughs> and, you know, he has this dark secret, all these things. So Okay, I need to read this. Yeah. I don't yeah. know why I haven't. Like, anything that's about, like, foxes, people know I'm yeah. going to want to read it. <laughs> and, like, that, like, I cannot get enough of that dynamic. I don't care how many times I've seen it done. I'm like, mm-hmm. Yep. Yes. Like, I have, to be in, I have to be in a specific mood to go for the other dynamic, the, like, mm-hmm. one where the girl's stronger. Like, I don't know why. It's just... Well, it's what you strong. love. Yeah, you it's, love. It's, it's fine. Like, yeah, I like the I like the bubbly girl and the guy who's like, I'm so like uh, wealthy and hot and stoic, and I just stand here. But then I'm slow. My facade <laughs> is slowly gonna crack, and you'll see that I actually like you. It's just yeah. There's something about it. We get it. We get it. Uh, yeah, it's a good dynamic, and and I have to say that book was really good too. I liked Shadow of the Fox. Um, it. It has kind of this episodic feel almost where each chapter oh, is they, they're kind of on this quest. And so like each chapter they kind of have like their own little midi quest that they have to complete. I don't know how to explain it, <laughs> but <laughs> um, it was pretty good. I liked it. Oh, interesting. Well, add that to the list. I have yeah. that book. Oh, yeah. I do have that book. I do really I like the Reddit. covers. <laughs> I do really like yes. the covers for mm-hmm. that series as well. It's a good symbol cover. I might covers. listen to it's the good, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty it's sure the simple. audiobook is narrated by Caitlin Davies. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure she narrates uh, that. No, I don't um, think she does because I've listened to the audiobook. There are three narr- oh, narrators. Oh, really? And I'm pretty sure she's not oh, one Oh, she's of not them. one of the narrators? No, oh, I think she, she, she might must be have done... the main one. She might be the girl. I, I'm not sure. Okay. I don't remember. Because I think I remember there was something of, there was some reason why I wanted to read that. And if it's like a narrator that I like... It's usually that's usually going to be why I specifically want to <laughs> why I want yeah. to listen to the audiobook over like the regular book, but yeah, it might not have been her. I yeah, I do have to say this was something I forgot about. There are like three perspectives. There were three different narrators, and it was very confusing to me at first. Okay, oh. because I do not, I don't really do audiobooks. I have mm-hmm. audio processing issues and. I just do not really like audiobooks, but I just happened to be at a time where it was like the audiobook was the only option, so I just happened to listen to it. And just having three different storylines that I had to keep track over audio, it was too much. Yeah. Oh, no. It's probably fine. You know what I mean? Like, for somebody who doesn't have issues like me, it's probably not a problem at all. But I just, I, I feel like if it had just been the two, it would have been fine. But it opens with this, like, other perspective that comes in every once in a while throughout the book but then it's like mostly oh, these other two and they're not introduced till yeah it was it was kind huh. of confusing I forgot about that yeah I don't think Caitlin Davies is one of the she did she did Talon so that might be what I'm getting it mixed up with oh, oh yeah okay. maybe because I did listen to I did listen to Talon and it made me want to listen to like a bunch of because it, it, Talon is Julie Kagawa too right yeah Yep. Okay. Yeah. It's it made a me dragon want to one. To like a bunch. Yep. Yeah. I listen. I I listened to the first one, but mm-hmm. I forgot to finish that series. <laughs> I think that series is like five books or something. I get intimidated when it's multiple yeah. books. I'm like, and I also don't tend to read. It's very rare for me to be like, I'm going to read the first book and every book in the series back to back. I'm usually like, I'm going to read the first book. I'm going to read a different book from there. Then maybe I'll go back to that one. And you know what? I didn't want to think about that because we already talked about TBR problems. So. <laughs> You're like, no, I'm getting stressed just thinking about it. I know. It. I forgot stressed. all the books that I've left behind. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So those are the books we read. Uh, do you want to mention any other authors? Kay, I know you had like a list. Yeah, I was trying yeah. to make a list. Um, there's These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. That one is really cool. It's a Romeo and Juliet retelling, but it takes place – Oh, I don't remember the year. It takes place in... I think it's in the 1920s. 20s, yeah. 1920s. The 20s, maybe. And Shanghai. in China somewhere, Shanghai. I, I should know, but I don't I remember. I think it's Shanghai. Yeah, I think I think it was Shanghai, but I don't remember. So sorry if I'm wrong. <laughs> We're great at this. <laughs> um, anyway, that one was really cool. I thought it was uh, cool that it had this, like... It was just a, such a different setting and stuff to be paired with Romeo and Juliet. So I really liked that. Yeah. Um, also, well, actually, we talked about Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. Um, These Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chakshi. 
Um, oh, I just I just wrote down Marie Lou. I don't. She's written so many. What's, oh. <laughs> what's her best one, guys? I don't know. I didn't write down a book. Legend is so good. That one is. War Cross, I think, was like a very big one that people really love. I think oh, I heard good things about that. Yeah, I haven't mm-hmm. read that one. I did really love Legend, so I'm sure War Cross is also good. Um, also, Kendar Blake, Kendar Blake, who wrote. Uh, what is it? Three dark crowns. Three. Oh, okay. Is that what it's I'm always. I it's th- it's something I just go to Anna and, and drenched in blood whatever that series like that's oh, where my, that when my brain too. goes. That's the first. I think that's her debut. Mm-hmm. Is a horror I one. It was didn't great. Even know that, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, there are a lot of really awesome books out there by Asian mm-hmm. authors and um. Six Crimson Cranes is the best one, so read that one first. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm not biased at all, but no, we definitely. Biased. Yeah, we know. Um, <laughs> no, I definitely like this topic because I just like I love books that are like that bring different cultures in to the light. You know what I mean? Like, it's so cool to read a story that's like it's fantasy, but it's like inspired by something that we may never he even heard of because we didn't grow up in that world and then you get to see it like on page in a really cool way and stuff i don't know i just love that also i do that so maybe i'm just no i do that i think it's great i think you know we're so used to that's one of the beauty one of the beautiful things about reading is you know all of us grow up in our own little worlds to some extent and Mm -hmm. we just kind of know what we know and by reading we're really able to be um, become more aware of other places and other people and other cultures and other things. And in fantasy, of course, some of those things that we become aware of are, you know, pretend they're not real places or real people <laughs> or whatever. But it's still just, um, I think just in general, actually, there are there is hard evidence and studies that, you know, prove that by reading, we become open to um we become more accepting and more open to mm-hmm. other things um, when we read and consume, you know, media of of other cultures and people and just other ideas than maybe what we grew up thinking. So I do. I really love how. Um, yeah, I just love that too. Is all. <laughs> it's beautifully, beautifully put. I love it. That's it. I don't have anything else. Okay to say. then. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, all right. Let's wrap it up then. Um, yeah, so if you guys have read any of these, we would love to hear your thoughts. I will make a bookshop page with the links uh, for these books and some of the ones Kay also mentioned, just so you guys have options if you're looking to check out to expand your horizons. Um, you can. And also, if you purchase from the bookshop page, you support an indie bookstore. So it's a win win. Anyway, uh, also make sure to follow us on Instagram at Reading Queens Pod. And then before you go, please leave us a star review or just a star rating on your favorite podcast platform and follow us there so that you can be notified when we have another show coming which is actually every wednesday so put that on your calendars as well i don't know what i'm talking about anymore we are gonna go now uh tell everybody to come listen to this podcast that is all bye Bye -bye. bye